Hello guys, this video is going to be about two Chernyakhov culture samples. Uh, in fact, th these are the only two Chernyakhov culture samples that you can find on Explore Your DNA or anywhere else. And uh, what's interesting about the Chernyakhov culture is I was under the impression that this is an Iron Age Slavic culture. However, the evidence in terms of the raw DNA and uh, even what is being believed by the historians is that it's most likely not a Slavic culture, but some kind of a pre-Slavic culture of Eastern Europe. Let's move on to the first sample. This is MJ19. Now, she's a girl who lived in the Iron Age. The other sample is also a girl. And this is what MJ19 looked like. According to Nosha Kod, she had hazel eyes. Greek shaped nose and brown hair with snipper free she's also predicted to have hazel or green eyes uh, and white skin I'm not gonna show you the result with YSEC because she wasn't genotyped for the main uh, BH2 variant as you can see in the top right corner of the screen BH2 is undetermined uh, she had BH1 did not have BH4 or BH3 she had this super rare genotype in TPCN2 which increases the odds of having blonde hair uh, she had this genotype in ACT1, which reduces the odds of cannabis-induced psychosis. Based on her genotype in this variation of DRD2, we can assume that she did not have the European no-go learner mutation in pro 19 pro so definitely lower risk of schizophrenia. Uh, she did not have the European mutation that protects against myopia, so probably had worse eyesight and she did not have derived OXTR which is what on this channel I call the sociopath gene so no sociopath gene. Um, she also did not have East Asian EDAR, no East Asian uh, derived EDAR, no East Asian facial traits such as shovel shaped incisors or epicanthic folds. When it comes to polygenic traits and illnesses she had an average risk score for Crohn's disease, uh, she had an average risk score for Parkinson's disease, uh, she had an average risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, she had a very low risk score for type 2 diabetes. Uh, she had a pretty high risk score for asthma. She had a very low risk score for coronary heart disease. Uh, she had a very low risk score for schizophrenia. And she had an average risk score for stroke. This is what she scores with Eugene's K13. And I gotta say... Uh, unlike what I was told by the original commenter who suggested this video, she does not really look, this does not really look like a Slavic result because there's 32% North Atlantic, there's only 38% Baltic, and there is a lot of West Asian. It's just a very exotic result uh, by Slavic standards. She's still closest to South Poles, but the distance, as you can see, is not very, not very low. And she's getting modeled as a mixture of Ukrainian plus North German or Ukrainian plus Danish. So I think there is some Germanic admixture here for sure. This is what she scores with Harappa World. Um, maybe this result is slightly more in line with what's typical for Slavs and Balts, although she still has very high Baloch and Mediterranean component here. And with the Oracle, she's closest to Slovenians and Hungarians at a pretty high distance. So I don't think this person, I don't think these people in general were Slavic people. I think they were like a mixture of Germanic, Sarmatian, whatever else. Uh, basically what you were seeing on Wikipedia, right? Uh, not Slavic at all. And this is the official G25 for the sample. Now, by looking at the closest populations, you can get the impression that this is maybe a Slavic sample. However, if you look at the mixed mode, clearly not a Slavic individual. And with the MDLP K23B, this is what she scores. Uh, she's scoring 26% Caucasian, which is kind of typical for Eastern Europeans today. But she's got a lot more farmer, a lot more Southwest European admixture. And because of that, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Belarusian plus Sardinian or even Croat. Uh, Croatian plus Norwegian. Here's what she scores with Pan DNA LK12. Actually, only 13.8% Caucasus hunter gatherer and a lot of Anatolian Neolithic farmers. So, this is a more typical result for the southwest of Europe rather than the northeast. And uh, with the Oracle, she's getting modeled as closest to Romanians and Hungarians at pretty high distances. And actually, getting modeled as a mixture of Spanish plus Russian or Alternatively, English plus Bedouin or some kind of Northwest European plus some kind of Middle Eastern. This is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Once again, not a very typical result for a Russian or a Ukrainian. Russians and Ukrainians would get maybe 2% less Natufian and 2% more Ancestral North Eurasian. And with Gedrosia K3, this is what she scores. 95% West Eurasian. So clearly a very Caucasoid individual, a lot of West Eurasian, a lot of Caucasoid drift. Now we'll be moving on to the second woman, also from Ukraine, but this time from sort of the 
northeastern part of Ukraine, like Sumskaya Oblast, I think, is in that region. Um, and with my Nasha quote, she's predicted to have blue eyes with an amber center, Greek-shaped nose and blonde hair. Uh, she had BH1, blue eye haplotype 1 and BH2, uh, which means 23 and me would predict her to have blue eyes, but she did not have uh, BH4, obviously, because you can't have BH4 and BH2, and it's undetermined whether or not she had BH3. Uh, Snipper Freak predicted her to have a blue eye color, and she actually had the same blonde variant in TPCN2 as the previous uh, individual. And by the way, this is a very rare variant. It's only 1%. The frequency of this variant, uh, I should say the frequency of this genotype, actually, is only 1% among um, code gen users. According to her genotype in drg 2 Sporofrenensin Pro variant, she did not have the European no-go learner mutation, very different from the previous sample. Um, she was not genotyped for the main variant in Comte or any of the other variants in Comte, so I wasn't able to figure out whether she's a warrior or warrior. Uh, and when it comes to OXTR, I actually was able to figure it out. I found this um, I found this variant in OXTR, which she was genotyped for, and here she had CC, so definitely did not have the sociopath gene. She did not have the European mutation that protects against myopia, so she might have needed glasses to see in the distance. Um, she was not a carrier for the hemochromatosis mutation, which is a, a mutation that basically results in excessive iron in the body. It's called the Celtic curse for a reason. Mostly Celtic people have this uh, mutation. And um, she did not have derived EDAR, so no East Asian facial traits, no shovel-shaped incisors, no epicanthic folds. When it comes to polygenic traits and diseases, she had an average risk score for type 2 diabetes, a below average risk score for schizophrenia, a average risk score for bipolar disorder, uh, she had a very low risk score for coronary heart disease, uh, she had a very low risk score for Parkinson's disease, and she had a very low risk score for Crohn's disease. This is what she scores with Eurogenes K13, uh, very high North Atlantic, very low Baltic, uh, very high West Asian. So this is not a typical score for any Slav today. Even Slavs from the Balkans would not really score like this. Uh, Serbians would score much less North Atlantic, for example. And she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Romanian plus Swedish, which does reflect the historical historical background of this culture, right? Chernyakhiv culture. It's a mixture of Dacians, Sarmatians, and uh, Germanic people. This is what she scores with um, G25. What's interesting, for the mixed mode, she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Rumelian plus Finnish plus French. So there's nothing Slavic here at all. There is no Ukrainian, no Russian. You don't really see that with this result. And with Harappa World, this is what she scores. A very high Caucasian score, actually. Uh, she's closest to Hungarians and Slovenians, but because of the high Caucasian score, she's getting modeled as a mixture of North European plus Georgian or Pashtun plus or Baloch. Basically a mixture. There's There's some there's some shift towards the Caucasus in this individual. This is what she scores with Pond DNA LK10. Very high Caucasus. There's 34% CHG. Typical for Europeans would be 20-25. So that's why I think she's got some Sarmatian admixture, some kind of Iranic admixture too. Uh, with the Oracle, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Czech plus Kumig or Norwegian plus Abkhazian. Uh, this is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6, and it's a very interesting result. She's got more Natufian, 3% more Natufian than the previous woman. And this is definitely an outlier for Eastern Europeans. No Eastern European is going to have 37% Natufian with this calculator. She's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Spanish plus some kind of ancient North Eurasian. 90% um, Spanish, 10% ancient North Eurasian, basically. This is what she scores with Kedros AK3. Um, this is an Iron Age individual, so she's pretty modern, pretty much a modern person. She's got all of our modern genetic drift, and that's why she's scoring 94% West Eurasian here. So, did you like the video? Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy what I do here on YouTube. And also you can download both of these samples in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Goodbye.